from the Oregon State University Softball Stadium in Corvallis. We welcome you to the 2012 Class 5A Softball Championship game as the Pendleton Buckaroos, champions of the Columbia River Conference, meet the Silverton Foxes from the Mid-Willamette Conference. Hi everybody, I'm Todd Pickett and we welcome you to this 5A Championship game. Pendleton back in the final for the second year in a row after losing last year's game to West Albany by a 7-6 score. They avenged that loss in this year's semifinals, beating West Albany by a score of 5 to nothing after beating Churchill 7 nothing and Sandy 5 to 1 in previous rounds of the playoffs. Coach Tim Carey says his team a lot looser this year, just committed too many mistakes in the loss to West Albany last year. Silverton meanwhile has been a little bit of the Cinderella story as it were. The Foxes finished third in the tough mid Willamette Conference, but they've started to put things together, obviously, in the playoffs. They were seeded number 13 in the state rankings, and they open up the playoffs by defeating number three, North Eugene, 9-0. They beat Liberty 2 to nothing, and then the Dallas Watonka by a score of 1 to nothing. So they have not allowed a run in the playoffs in reaching their first championship game ever. Pendleton just about as good. They have not allowed an earned run in three rounds of playoff competition. So we'll see a couple of outstanding pitchers, and we'll see whether Pendleton can bounce back from last year's disappointment to claim it, or whether Silverton will pull off and finish up this amazing playoff run that has seen them get to their first ever final. <laughs> Pendleton, the visiting team today, as you can see, both teams are wearing dark uniforms, so uh, we'll have to pay a little bit of sharp attention. The Buckaroos with the green, and the Silverton Foxes with the orange and silver trim. Shea Lindsay will step in to lead things off for Pendleton. The center fielder, a 315 batting average, no home runs, four RBIs. And the first pitch to her from Katie Mannion is a little bit short. Jennifer French of the Mid-Valley is our home plate umpire. Ken White, Central Oregon Association at first base. And David Blake from Lane County is at third. 1-0 count. The slap attempt to swing and a miss by Lindsay. She'll be followed in the lineup by her sister Darian at third base. Cassidy Lemberger at shortstop. And Rain Spencer, the catcher, is the cleanup hitter. Evangelina Oliveira is at second base. Jory Spencer at first. Regan Leonard in right field. Courtney Schumacher, Sweet in left, and Tia Grass is the designated player. Two and one now, the count to Lindsay. You can see the Silverton infield in, but they've got the second baseman coming, not the first. And a hopper back, nice snag by the shortstop Haley Hibbs. And the throw to first is in time to Shelby McIntyre for the first out. Interesting defense there by Silverton in the slap and bunt situation, scooting in the second baseman rather than having the first baseman come down the corner. And a nice snag on a short hop there by Hibbs, the shortstop, to make the play. Darian Lindsay will be the batter, a 500 batting average. No home runs, 14 RBIs. Fastball down the middle for a called strike. Defensively for Silverton, it's Shelby McIntyre at first. Jordan Martin at second, Hibbs at short, and Lillian Hall is at third base. A one pitch is inside for a 1-1 count. Danny Shecker is in left, McKenna Kenzie in center, and Destiny Sandlin in right, Taylor Medley the catcher, and Katie Mannion in the circle for Silverton. One and one. Base hit for Lindsay underneath the second baseman, Martin. Two solidly hit balls. One got a good defensive play. The other earns the first hit of the ball game. So Cassidy Lemberger will be the batter. 342 average. Two homers. 14 RBIs. And we'll see what Pendleton coach Tim Carey does here with a runner on. Runner going on the first pitch. It's fouled away. Over the first base stands for strike one. Corner infielders crashing a little bit this time. Grounded toward the hole at short. Hibbs will knock it down, but that's the only play she's going to be able to make as she was breaking with the runner. And it'll go as an infield single for Lemberger. Two on with one out. <laughs> Rain Spencer will be the batter. Spencer, 361 average, two homers, and 13 RBIs. Back a little deep in the box. 
Yeah, big swing on the first one. Down the line, a base hit third. That'll score at least one. Lindsay around to score. They're going to wave the second runner as well. Lemberger for the plate. She'll score standing up. A double and two RBIs, and Pendleton leads it 2 nothing. Sharply hit ball by Spencer as she tucked it inside the third base line. Pendleton will bring out a courtesy runner for her. It'll be a Michael Weisenflu out at second base as the runner. And the batter will be Evangelina Oliveira, the second baseman. 313 average, no home runs, and 13 RBIs. So the Bucks on the board hurt early here. Three hits in the inning already and two across. Inside for 1-0. Almost perfect weather right now. Sunny, blue skies. It's been rather gray in the early part of the day, but great weather right now. Not a lot of breeze. Inside corner, and it's one and one. Defense again tight at the corners. Just outside, apparently, and it's two balls and a strike. Second baseman Martin trying to bluff the runner back. Two one swing and a miss. Got out in front of that fastball, and it's two balls and two strikes. Just missing on the outside corner again. Our home plate umpire Jennifer French sitting up on the inside shoulder of the catcher, so outside corner might be a little bit tougher for the pitchers to get that call right now. And we have a 3-2 count. Low for ball four. And Jory Spencer will step in for Pendleton. A 319 hitter. No homers. 15 RBIs. Into the netting for strike one. Weisenflu, the courtesy runner, is at second. Oliveira at first with one gone still here in the top of the first inning. Outside. And it's one ball, one strike. Pendleton again ranked number one in the 5A classifications in the OSAA rankings. Silver to number 13. To left and deep, going gone. The first home run of the state championships. And it's a three-run blast for Jory Spencer to make it 5 nothing Pendleton. Not a bad time to hit your first home run of the year. That one was solid. And it is 5-0 in favor of the Buckaroos with still just one out. Regan Leonard, the batter for Pendleton. Leonard, 343, no home runs and 12 RBIs. As you would expect, they're bouncing around wildly in the Pendleton dugout and the fans are making a lot of noise as the first pitch is bounced short. And Katie Mannion right now just needs to settle down and try to get out of this inning without any further damage. Swing and a miss there for one and one. Off speed caught the outside corner that time and it's one and two. It'll be interesting to see how the Foxes in their first ever championship game will rally from this. A late swing. 
by Leonard, and she is gone for the second out. Well, this will uh, be a little bit of shell shock for Silverton, or if they'll be able to bounce back. Remember, they had not given up a run in the playoffs in three rounds, and they've given up five here in the first inning to Pendleton. Courtney Schumacher sweep the batter. Strike on the outside corner. Courtney, a 151 hitter, no homers, six RBIs. Big fastball and a swing and a miss there for nothing and two. And Mannion feeling a little more confident here against the bottom part of the Pendleton lineup. Called strike three on the outside corner, and suddenly that corner was there where it wasn't before. And that will retire Pendleton in the first inning, but not before they have an enormous first inning. Five runs on four hits, including the three-run home run by Jory Spencer. No errors, and nobody left on base. And at the end of one half inning, well, Pendleton certainly has staked pitcher Kristen Crawford to quiet a lead here as they are up 5 nothing, waiting for the Silverton Foxes to come to bat. And here is the batting order for the Silverton Foxes. Leading off will be the right fielder, Destiny Sandlin. Batting second. Playing first base is Shelby McIntyre. Shortstop Haley Hibbs will bat third. The cleanup hitter is the pitcher, Katie Mannion. Batting fifth, the catcher, Taylor Medley. In the sixth spot, the second baseman, Jordan Martin. Batting seventh, playing third base is Lillian Hall. The number eight hitter is the left fielder, Danny Shecker. And the center fielder, McKenna Kenzie, is the number nine hitter. No designated player for the Silverton Foxes and head coach, Ralph Cortez. <laughs> Defensively for Silverton, it's Jory Spencer at first, Evangelina Olvera at second, Cassidy Lemberger at short, and Darian Lindsay is at third. Courtney schumacher Sweek in left, Shea Lindsay in center, and Regan Leonard in right. Rain Spencer the catcher, and Kristen Crawford 18-5 with a 1.43 ERA on the mound for Pendleton. And the first pitch swung on by Sandlin at short. Third baseman Lindsay tried to get to it. Lemberg of the shortstop kept charging, didn't give up on the ball, and makes the play at first base for the initial out. Well, Tim Carey said his team was much more relaxed. They're certainly showing it so far. A big offensive top half of the inning, and they start off the bottom of the first with a nice defensive play. Shelby McIntyre, the batter for Silverton, and a fastball called strike on the inside corner. Crawford's thrown 151 in a third inning, struck out 129. Fastball up high, and right now she knows she just needs to fire and let her pitching and the team defense do the work with this five-run advantage. Called strike on the inside corner as McIntyre jumped back from the pitch, and it's one and two. Nubbler down the right side, foul at first. And they'll head back. Spencer will get back behind the plate and look over to the dugout for the pitch call. We can play spy cam up here and spy on the pitch call in the dugout from this angle. Pitch is up high for two balls and two strikes. Fouled back into the netting, and it's two and two. If you watch that gentleman closely, the assistant coach, you'll see the pitch signal get flashed into the catcher as everybody gets settled. There it is. She'll relay it to the pitcher, and we're ready to go. Two, two. There's your inside look for today. Popped up right side of the infield, and Olvera, the second baseman, will take it in back of the bag for out number two. Shortstop Haley Hibbs will be the batter. And no, folks, we promise we won't steal any signals the rest of the game, honest. Nice-looking off-speed pitch from Crawford for a called strike. 
Crawford, one of three seniors on this Pendleton team that are going to get a little extra recognition at games and win or lose. We'll share that with you when we wrap up. Inside pitch for ball one. Gibbs braver than I. Might have been spinning out of the way of that one. Defense pretty well straight away. Crawford ready. The off speed. On two hops to short to Lemberger. Across to Spencer for out number three. And that'll close things out in the first inning for Silverton. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. One inning in the books in the 2012 5A championship game. It's Pendleton 5, Silverton nothing. You're watching OSAA.TV. At Les Schwab, along with great prices, our tires come with the kind of protection most other places just don't give you, which includes free flat repairs, equal value replacements, pre-trip safety checks, and more for the entire life of the tire. With the other guys, well, you just never know. So why is free protection on your tires good to have? Lifetime protection. That's our best tire value promise. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. And back in Corvallis, ready to start the second inning of play. The number nine hitter, designated player Chia Grass, will get things started for Pendleton. And then it'll be back up to the top of the lineup again for the center fielder, Shea Lindsay, and third baseman, Darian Lindsay. Real key for Silverton here just to get a smooth inning in. Not necessarily even a one, two, three, but just kind of get back on their feet a little bit defensively. Swing and a miss by Grass, an 085 hitter for the season. No homer, six RBIs. A little unusual. Pendleton electing to rest Kristen Crawford, have somebody hit for her. As this one's up short, it's one and one. Crawford, though, is a 300 hitter last season for the Buckaroos, but because she's doing so much of the work pitching, they decided to get her that rest time and bring in a DP for her. 1 1 pitch, misses outside. And it's 2-1-1. and one. Nice job that time by Mannion of turning it over, but she just pulled it a little wide. Both the corner infielders, McIntyre and Hall, about a step in front of the bag each as that one's up high again for 2-1-1. and one. Breeze picking up a bit now, blowing strongly out of the right field corner across the field to left. That kind of helped that home run ball a little bit. 2-1 is fouled back into the netting. Make it three and two now, not two and two. It's a full count. Mannion slapping the ball in the glove a couple times. Foul tipped into the catcher's glove for strike three. Second strikeout for Katie Mannion. And Shea Lindsay will be the batter. Started out the ball game by grounding out to shortstop. On a nice play by Haley Hibbs. Little did we know what would happen after that. Outside corner for a called strike. Next five hitters after that all scored. Capped by the three-run home run from Spencer. Big open stance by Lindsay. Tried to race up again and get contact. Way out in front and is nothing in two. The slap hitters, of course, have that tendency to race well out of the box. And yesterday, we actually had players called out twice for leaving the box early in this attempt. Pitch is just outside that time. And with two strikes, the Foxes will back the infield back a little bit. Second baseman Martin, who's in, is now in a, a little bit better position. And a swing and a miss on that one for strike three. Three strikeouts now for Mannion, including two in a row here to open the second, which is a good way to show that you've settled down. And Darian Lindsay, the batter, singled and scored on the double by Rain Spencer. Fastball called, strike on the inside corner, and a rather belated call as Lindsay was already out of the box and looking down to her coach before any kind of signal or call was made. Upstairs with the change, and it's one and one. Oh, 
popped in foul territory right by the Silverton dugout, but room for Hall to make the catch. Well, they got exactly what they needed, a 1-2-3 inning, including a couple of strikeouts that time for Mannion and for Pendleton in the second inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. So we'll go to the bottom of the second with Pendleton on top of Silverton by a score of 5 to nothing. And a reminder again, you can order DVDs of this championship game or any of the OSAA championship events that are covered here by going to prepfilms.com. And you'll get complete coverage of any OSAA championship event there. Archived activity as well for you to see at OSAA.tv. Four, five, six hitters are scheduled for Silverton here in the bottom of the second. The pitcher, Katie Mannion, will get things started. Then it'll be the catcher, Taylor Medley, and second baseman, Jordan Martin. Ralph Cortez hollering at his player as she steps in. First pitch fastball is inside from Crawford for ball one. A speed to short. Lemberger for Spencer for out number one. Catcher Taylor Medley will step in for Silverton. Crawford ready and a hitter on the elbow. And they will award her first base a little deliberation for a second there. Crawford's been flirting with that inside corner and just got that one away and caught Medley. So the first base runner of the game for Silverton. And Jordan Martin will be the batter. Outside corner and a called strike. Pendleton defense pretty straight away. So ain't going to miss as she got out in front of the off speed. And very quickly it's nothing in two. Tried to get her to nibble at the outside but wouldn't take it. One ball and two strikes. Lillian Hall on deck for Silverton. Left side, they'll go the short way and get one relay throw. Not in time. Boy, it was such a slow hit ball. I didn't think they'd have a chance of the double play. But Oliveira made a nice turn at second after getting the throw from Lindsay and almost pulled it off. So Medley is gone. And Martin aboard on the fielder's choice at first with two out. And Lillian Hall, the third baseman, will be the batter. Slow tapper. They do call it a fair ball, and Crawford fielding her position well comes out to take it and close out the second inning. For Silverton in the second, no runs on no hits, no errors, one runner left on base. After two innings, Pendleton 5, Silverton nothing, the 5A championship game on OSAA.tv. If you've stopped saving, let us help you start. Savings today and rewards tomorrow from U.S. Bank. Save a little every week with every purchase, every paycheck. Watch your savings grow. When you reach $1,000, you'll earn a $50 rewards Visa card. Earn another $50 when you keep it for a year. Save for a wedding day, a family, or your house. Just start. All of us serving you. U.S. Bank. Welcome you back to Corvallis, getting ready to start the third inning of this seven-inning scheduled Class 5A championship game. Pendleton in the finals for the second year in a row, leading it by a score of 5 to nothing. Cassidy Lemberger, the shortstop, will lead things off to be followed by the catcher, Rain Spencer, and second baseman, Evangelina Olvera. 
Lemberger, an infield single in her first at bat, pops this one foul, and just over the netting and down in front of us into the crowd. Pendleton with five runs on four hits in the first inning, and this is part of the lineup responsible for all of it. Inside, and she twists away for a 1-1 count. Up and away, two balls and one strike. Manning a little different grip on the ball there, and uh, you can watch her just kind of turn the hand and flip it over on that last delivery. Fastball the inside corner, and it's two and two on the swing. Outfield comes in a couple steps. Rip to left, but foul. Got a hold of that one. If it had been uh, inside there, it would have carried out on a liner for the home run. Lemberger with a couple of homers this season. Waits on the off speed, and it's low. Mannion unable to get her to get out in front and take a crack at it. We go to a full count. Good job hitting right there by Lemberger. The 3-2 on a hop for Hall across to McIntyre for the first down. Brain Spencer will step in, drilled a double just inside the left field line that brought home the first two runs of the ball game. Down low and outside for ball one. Left fielder Shecker about as deep as you can be and very tight to the line and left. There's a good gap in the left center field alley. Down and away again. And, of course, they're working her that outside corner so she can't take advantage and turn on one to put it into the alley there. 2-0 count to Spencer. Rain will step in again. And it's 2-1 off the end of the bat. couple different sets of sisters on this Pendleton squad. We've had that on several teams this weekend. Even further outside, and it goes to a 3-1 and one count. Right fielder Sandlin is fairly tight to the line as well against a right-handed hitter. And there's one into the alley in right center field. That'll get all the way to the wall. They're going to give her the green light for three to the cutoff. Throw for third is offline, and she's in safe with a triple. Not sure whether she really got good contact with the first base bag as she made that round, but a double and a triple now for Spencer in her first two at-bats. That payoff pitch, Mannion kind of put it into the heart a little bit, and Spencer was able to drive it, got it all the way to the wall. The courtesy runner will come in for her again, Michael Weissenflue. And Evangelina Olvera will be the batter. She walked in the five-run first inning. 15th of the ball game already for Pendleton here in the top of the third. And it's down low for ball one. Outfield again, stretched to the corners. Up and inside, and it's 2-0. And, oh. and again, Mannion trying to battle back after giving up another extra base hit, the third already for the Buckaroos. Oh. 2-0 oh pitch. Out in front just a bit and fouled it back to the netting.
popped up foul territory right side. No one's going to get to it. I don't know if the catcher couldn't find it, but Medley never made a move from behind home plate. McIntyre, the first baseman, made a long, long run but couldn't get to the ball. Two balls, two strikes. Outfield will readjust again. Kenzie sent back a little deeper in center field now. Off speed, couple of hops. Pitcher will look the runner back. And Mannion makes the throw to McIntyre for out number two. <laughs> Olvera tried to time that one, but just got out in front of it a little bit. And there are two gone. And Jory Spencer, who hit a three-run home run over the left field fence, will be the batter. Wisen flew the courtesy runner on at third. Pretty good reflexes just to be able to get out of the way of that one. Fastball low and it's 2-0. and oh. All working to Spencer's advantage. His manual will have to come up with something. Got out in front of that. And it's 2-1. and one. Actually hit Taylor Medley, the catcher, on her helmet. Man, and the pitcher coming in to inquire of her battery mate whether she's all right. And Medley a little slow getting set back up behind the plate still. Back again to the pitcher. Mannion fielding it. And she gets out of further danger after giving out the one-out triple to Spencer. The runner gets stranded at third. No runs, one hit, no errors. One runner left on base. First one left on base in the game for Pendleton, which says something about their efficiency. And midway through the third inning, we remain Pendleton 5 and Silverton nothing here in Corvallis. Don't forget again, fans, anytime you want to get a DVD of any OSAA championship event, you can go to prepfilms.com to place your order. Follow information from the website where you are right now at OSAA.tv, your video home of Oregon high school championship events. Eight, nine hitters scheduled for Silverton and then back to the top of the order here in the bottom of the third inning. It'll be Danny Shecker to lead things off, the left fielder. And then scheduled McKenna Kenzie, the center fielder, followed by right fielder Destiny Sandlin. Shecker set to step in against Kristen Crawford. Check swing foul. A little bit surprising, perhaps, that Crawford, who averaged just under a strikeout in the inning, has not recorded one yet so far. Down and away, one and one. Outfield fairly shallow for Pendleton, in particular Shea Lindsay in center field. Checker, a check swing as she almost was protecting herself, and skewed it off the end of the bat foul for a 1-2 count. Pendleton fans wanted to ring it up on that one and that one really wasn't that close inside and downstairs. And it's 2-2. Two and two. Line shot softly to the first baseman. Jory Spencer able to make that play for out number one. Center fielder McKenna Kenzie will be the batter. Fastball missing outside for ball one. Lindsay, the center fielder, creeping in even further. Almost a Mickey Rivers range she's in so short. 
Fastball called strike on the inside corner. Courtney Schumacher sweep and left. Also in fairly shallow against the right end hitter. And Leonard in tight in right field as well against this number nine hitter in the lineup. Off speed pitch, a called strike on the inside as Kenzie was tied up by that delivery. And it's one and two. Low roller, third baseman Darian Lindsay will come across with it to Spencer for the second out. Destiny Sandlin opened the hitting portion of the game for Silverton with a ground out to shortstop. Ball, a lot of heat on that one. Called strike on the inside corner. Rain Spencer had to turn around for a second and make sure she heard the strike call right. That was some heat, and she really spotted it in the lower corner of the strike zone. Tough pitch for anybody to handle. A speed foul tipped at the plate, and it's 0-2. The first base umpire started hollering for a minute and wasn't sure, but Ken White just calling that it was a dead ball foul. Cortez giving some instruction to Sandlin as she steps back in. Little waste pitch up and away. One and two. And we'll see what she comes up with now. Crawford has mixed speeds very well. And her location has been outstanding here through the first three innings. Just off the end of the bat, Crawford there quickly and makes the throw to first in time for a one, two, three inning. For Silverton, no runs, no hits for the third consecutive inning, no errors, and nobody left on base. Three innings of this 5A championship game complete. It's Pendleton 5, Silverton nothing. You're watching OSAA.tv. You can enjoy the best moments from this year's OSAA state championships over and over again. Just purchase a high-quality DVD from PrepFilms.com. Order online from PrepFilms.com and you'll get an enhanced version that includes scoreboard graphics. PrepFilms.com also has an extensive archive of past OSAA state championships. PrepFilms.com, your online home for OSAA state championship video. And you get a little bit of an indication of the breeze here in Corvallis as, again, it is uh, picking up a bit stronger, blowing out of that right field corner. We welcome you back to the OSU Softball Stadium. As we start the top of the fourth inning, a called strike first pitch to Regan Leonard, the right fielder for Pendleton. She'll be followed by left fielder Courtney schumacher Sweek and designated player Tia Grass, the bottom third of the order. For Pendleton, a little check swing foul there by Leonard, and it's 0-2. Leonard struck out in the first inning, one of three strikeouts recorded so far by Katie Mannion of Silverton. Outside corner, and she's gone. Great location that time by Mannion, who's been nibbling there and living out there for... A good portion of the ball game. Her fourth strikeout, second one called. The other one was on Courtney Schumacher's week in the first inning, and she steps in now. Fouled out of play, back behind the third base bleachers. Big high hop off the uh, walking path, and it bounces clear over the retaining fence back in back. Over towards the... Oregon State soccer field. Wind letting up a little bit. And that one fouled back into the netting in front of us. It's 0-2. Indicative of some of the things Pendleton does well, that they've got a couple of hitters under 200 in their lineup. And have still made it to the state championship game as Schumacher sweep, swings and misses. And that's five strikeouts now for Mannion. Tia Grass struck out with a foul tip into the catcher's mitt. 
So right now, prior to this at bat for Grass, the bottom three hitters, 7, 8, and 9, are 0 for 5 with five strikeouts. All of Mannion's strikeouts have come here, and she starts off Grass with a called strike. Out in front again for strike two. And the 0-2 off speed, foul tip back into the net. Mannion ready once again. To short. Hibbs with it across. And a 1-2-3 inning for Pendleton. In the fourth, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Silverton's settled down and kept Pendleton in check since the first inning. Only problem is the Foxes have not done anything on offense yet themselves. They will try to fix that as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning with Pendleton leading it by a score of 5 to nothing. For Silverton, it will be the two, three, and four hitters in the lineup coming up to face Kristen Crawford. First baseman, it's Shelby McIntyre will be followed by the shortstop, Haley Hibbs. And then the starting pitcher for Silverton, Katie Mannion. We mentioned earlier Crawford, 18-5 and five for the season for this Pendleton team that is 22-7 and seven overall. Crawford, a 1.43 ERA, 129 strikeouts to just 29 walks, so a better than 4-1 to one ratio. She has allowed one batter aboard when a hit by pitch and another on the fielder's choice, which eliminated the first runner. That has been it for Silverton so far. As Shelby McIntyre, who popped out the second base, steps in. First pitch swinging again. Fouls it back into the netting, and Rain Spencer couldn't figure out where the heck the ball had gone. Finally tracks it down. Crawford juggling the ball around in her right hand. The off speed a little bit too high. And it's one and one. Pretty empty Pendleton dugout when they're on defense. Only two reserves. Standing up on the railing right now as that one's fouled back. And it's one and two. Off speed pitch missed up high though and it's two balls two strikes Crawford ready that one fouled just out of play and into the seats on the first base side stays two and two Off speed, got her out in front, and there's the first strikeout of the ball game for Crawford to lead off the fourth. Good long at bat by McIntyre, but finally the off speed retired her, and Haley Hibbs will be the batter. Hibbs grounded out to shortstop in her first at bat. Inside corner for ball one. Up, upstairs a little bit as well. And I think Crawford doesn't like that softball. She wants to exchange it. And we'll do so now with home plate umpire Jennifer French. And head back out to the circle. Just missed inside. Pendleton fans wondered where that one. The assistant coach, the pitching coach, put his hands up in disgust. And it's 2-0 and oh for Hibbs. The off-speed floater, a called strike. And it's 2-1. and one. Crawford's done a really nice job with that pitch, keeping the hitters off balance. Big motion, fouled back into the netting, and she comes back from 2-0 to 2-2.
Gibbs looking down to the coach for a second. Now steps back in once again. It's Crawford taking a little bit of time. The 2-2. A little bloop shot to the second baseman, and Oliveira is there to make the catch for out number two. Pitcher Katie Mannion will be the batter. She also grounded out to shortstop in her first at bat. Foul down the third baseline past Coach Ralph Cortez. Off speed. Batter held up. Umpire says it's a ball. Good job by Mannion, who was about ready to break the wrists on that one. And it's one and one. Loop to the right side. Nice running catch made just in fair territory by Jory Spencer. And Silverton is retired in the fourth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. Kristen Crawford has faced just one batter over the minimum. And at the end of four innings of play, it's Pendleton 5, Silverton nothing. You're watching the 5A Softball State Championships on OSAA.tv. If you've stopped saving, let us help you start. Savings today and rewards tomorrow from U.S. Bank. Save a little every week with every purchase, every paycheck. Watch your savings grow. When you reach $1,000, you'll earn a $50 rewards Visa card. Earn another $50 when you keep it for a year. Save for a wedding day, a family, or your house. Just start. All of us serving you. U.S. Bank. And a nice afternoon here in Corvallis. Even nicer, I suppose, right now if you're a Pendleton fan as they take a 5 nothing lead into the fifth <laughs> inning. <laughs> and it'll be the top of the order for the Buckaroos. Center fielder Shea Lindsay to lead off. Followed by third baseman Darian Lindsay and shortstop Cassidy Lemberger. <laughs> Shea Lindsay, the only one of the first six hitters in the lineup to not reach base so far for Pendleton. First pitch misses just outside. Lindsay grounded out in the first and struck out in the second. Pendleton with all five of its runs coming on four hits in the first inning. Well, that one further outside was called a strike and it's one and one. Silverton making a change defensively now as the second baseman Martin retreats. The first baseman McIntyre will come in tight at the corner instead. 1-1 one, one pitch lined right at short and a nice defensive play by Haley Hibbs. Her second good defensive play of the game. A little bit of a leap and a twist to backhand that liner for the first out. Silverton fans roar on that. One, because it was a great play. Two, because they haven't had a whole lot to be able to cheer about. And some nice defense by Hibbs there for the Foxes. Darian Lindsay, the batter, singled and scored in the first. Popped out in foul territory in the second. This one a floater right to Hibbs again. And she'll make her second catch of the inning. Cassidy Lemberger will be the batter. Lemberger reached on an infield single and scored in the first and grounded out the third in the third inning. Hibbs, three for three in the inning. It's the Haley Hibbs show on defense. However, unlike what you're supposed to have, she's not leading off the inning on the offense for Silverton. In the fifth inning for Pendleton, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. And we'll go to the bottom of the fifth inning with Pendleton on top of Silverton by a score of five to nothing. Some good defense there by Hibbs as she equals a state record with most catches in an inning. A record that may never be broken as we move to the bottom half of the fifth inning. It'll be the number five hitter catcher Taylor Medley to lead things off for Silverton. She'll be followed by the second baseman Jordan Martin.
And then the third baseman, Lily Ann Hall. Silverton's Foxes in their first ever softball championship game. Pendleton in the final for the second year in a row. Ralph Cortez hollering at Taylor Medley. Let's get it started. Let's go as she steps into the batter's box to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Inside from Kristen Crawford for ball one. Got the outside corner for a called strike. Crawford looking cool, calm, and collected, and a little air of mystery behind the shades as well. It's like not being able to read the eyes of a poker player. Off speed 1-1, one, one, slowly tapped on a couple hops to Crawford, and she'll throw to Jory Spencer for the first out. Jordan Martin will be the batter. Martin reached on a fielder's choice. Fouls that first pitch off into the Pendleton dugout. Again, the beauty of that is there's only two subs, so it's relatively empty. Said Martin reached on a fielder's choice after Medley had been hit by a pitch. Crawford looking out at her defense for a second. Now winds the off-speed pitch. One-hop sitter for Lindsay. And Darian across to Jory Spencer for the second out. Lillian Hall will be the batter. She grounded back to the pitcher to close out the second inning. To short. Lemberger across in time for out number three. It's another one, two, three inning for Silverton in the fifth. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Kristen Crawford just extends the zeros further on the scoreboard for Silverton. At the end of five, Pendleton five, Silverton nothing on the 5A Softball State Championship. This is OSAA.TV. At Les Schwab, along with great prices, our tires come with the kind of protection most other places just don't give you, which includes free flat repairs, equal value replacements, pre-trip safety checks, and more for the entire life of the tire. With the other guys, well, you just never know. So why is free protection on your tires good to have? Lifetime protection. That's our best tire value promise. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. And we welcome you back. Championship game. Rain Spencer will lead things off for Pendleton. The catcher will be followed by second baseman Evangelina Oliveira and first baseman Jory Spencer. And that one is hit deep. Going back, and it is gone. A first pitch home run for Rain Spencer. I'll tell you what. If there's one thing I am glad of right now, it's that I don't have to pick a player of the game. Because Rain Spencer now is three for three, a double, a triple, a home run, and three RBIs. But at the same time, her pitcher is putting up zeros against Silverton. For Rain Spencer, though, her third home run of the year, as she cranked that one out to left. It's the second home run of the game. For Pendleton, the other one hit by her sister, Jory, who is now on deck. And meanwhile, oh, by the way, Evangelina Oliveira is up. Oliveira walked and scored and grounded back to the pitcher. 6-0 now in favor of Pendleton. First pitch a ball to Oliveira. Well, there'll be equal bragging rights in the Spencer household tonight. Although one will go, yeah, yours was just a solo. Mine was a three-run, and mine went a little bit further, I think. But it'll be an interesting discussion. Called strike again on the inside corner, and it's one and two. Yeah. 
Bucker is the only team to come up with home runs so far in the uh, state playoffs, and they've got two of them in the ball game now as that pitch bounced short for a 2-2 count. Well, Rain Spencer living up to her billing as the cleanup hitter, that's for sure. Check swing foul. Not too often that the only hit you need is the single to hit for the cycle, but that's her situation right now. It's usually the triple that's hardest to get. Inside to Oliveira, and it's a full count at three and two. Just inside for ball four, and Oliveira with a good eye has walked for the second time in the ball game. She's received both of the walks from Katie Mannion. And Jory Spencer, who homered in the first to cap that five-run inning, will be the batter. Shows bunt, fouled it back off the tip of the bat. Interesting there, 6-0 lead, and Tim Carey still working on advancing runners and playing some small ball. 0-1, shows Bud again, lays it down perfectly. They'll have to go to first. It's the only play there. And on the 3-4 sacrifice, Jory Spencer moves Evangelina Oliveira up to second base. One gone, and Regan Leonard will be the batter. She has struck out twice. Leonard, a 343 hitter, has been corralled so far. Pops this one up down the left field line. And the shortstop, who else? Hibbs will make the catch in fair territory down the left field line. Hibbs has certainly shown a good range today. And has played her position solidly. Courtney Schumacher, Sweek, 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Oliveira on at second with two down. Fouled back. Started to step into that pitch and watched it float high for a one and one count. Wind a little calmer right now as Mannion gets back in the circle and that fastball got a generous call on the inside corner for one and two. in front of that one for the third strikeout for Courtney and the sixth overall of the ball game for Katie Mannion. Now Pendleton puts one more on the board though on the solo home run by Rain Spencer her third home run of the year and they get one run on one hit no errors and one runner left on base. Kind of quiet on the Silverton side of things right now as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning with the score Pendleton six and Silverton nothing. Danny Shecker, the left fielder, will lead off for Silverton in the bottom of the sixth. She's the number eight hitter in the lineup. And then after Danny, it'll be the center fielder, McKenna Kenzie. And then it's back to the top of the order for Silverton for right fielder Destiny Sandlin. Don't forget, you can own a copy of this game. Get your own piece of OSAA history or any other OSAA championship contest. Order DVDs of all OSAA.TV championship broadcasts at prepfilms.com. Shecker will step in. She lined out to the first baseman, Jory Spencer, leading off the third inning. Foul down the first baseline. Ralph Cortez remaining positive with his team down that third base box. Well, 
One hopper again. And again, Crawford able to field it. It's the fourth time in the ball game that someone has grounded back to the pitcher for Silverton. McKenna Kenzie grounded out to third base in her first at bat. And it looks as though we're going to have a change here. And it will be Mira Scherer coming on as a pinch hitter for Shecker, or for Kenzie, excuse me. And she will step in now for Kenzie here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Inside corner for a called strike. Crawford still just one strikeout in this entire ball game. A pitcher who averaged nearly one per inning. Gets the call there on an off-speed pitch, and it's nothing in two. Sherry just kind of shaking her head right now, trying to figure out what in the heck to do. Just missed on the outside corner, and a nice job by Shira not going after that pitch. To the right side of the infield, slow roller fielded by Jory Spencer. She'll wait and just tag the runner rather than stepping on the bag. And there are two gone. Right fielder Destiny Sandlin will be the batter. Sandlin is grounded to short in the first, grounded back to the pitcher in the third inning. Crawford turns around, takes a look at her defense again, and she's ready with the first pitch. Yanked foul over to the third base dugout for strike one. Sandlin walking well down the third base line to check in with her coach. Now she's ready again. A one off speed misses, and it's one ball and one strike. Dust starting to kick up just a little bit here as the infield continues to dry out a bit more in the breeze and the sun. Still a lot of clouds, but none of them dark ones right now. Back into the netting, and it's one and two. Sandlin set once again. And the one-two pitch. Just got a piece of it back into the netting to stay alive. Defense pretty well straight away for Pendleton. The center fielder Lindsay retreats a bit now, but she has been very, very shallow throughout most of the game. Sandlin, another long delay as she checks with her coach. And the one-two off speed to the left side. Lindsay, the third baseman, up with it to Spencer for out number three. Another inning of zeros for Silverton. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We'll move to the seventh in this 5A championship game. It's been all Pendleton so far. The Buckaroos six and the Silverton Foxes nothing. You're watching the 5A softball state championship on OSAA.tv. If you've stopped saving, let us help you start. Savings today and rewards tomorrow from U.S. Bank. Save a little every week with every purchase, every paycheck. Watch your savings grow. When you reach $1,000, you'll earn a $50 rewards Visa card. Earn another $50 when you keep it for a year. Save for a wedding day, a family, or your house. Just start. All of us serving you. U.S. Bank.
Top of the seventh inning, and Pendleton's going to make a uh, hitting change here for the designated player. And I think this is an attempt to get everybody on the team into this state championship game. Nope, it's going to be Wisenflu actually hitting instead. I thought that they might bring out Haley Klein, who's a backup pitcher, a sophomore, but has not appeared in the game yet. It will be Michael Wisenflu, who has been the courtesy runner a few times today, and Wisenflu is going to get a chance to hit now as she steps in for grass at the number nine slot in the lineup, the designated player, the DP position. Weissenflu is 0 for 2 for the season, but has scored three runs, primarily as a courtesy runner. Pitch a called strike, and she's down 0 and 2. Nice move here by Tim Carey. And got a piece of it. Looked like it was fouled off, and now they finally make the call. Bounced in the box, bounced off of her, and then rolled out in fair play. And then finally, after she'd nearly crossed the bag, the home plate umpire makes the call. So Weisenflu's still in at 0-2. And, and she chases one outside for strike three. Seven strikeouts to the ball game for Katie Mannion. And Shay Lindsay will be the batter now back at the leadoff spot for Pendleton. Lindsay grounded to short in the first, struck out in the second, and lined to short in the fifth inning. Infield in tight again against Lindsay, and she takes the first pitch low for ball one. Tried to slap that one and hits it foul, and it's nothing in two. You see the second baseman, Martin, in tight in the bunt defense, the slap defense, and this one right back up the middle. Nice piece of hitting by Lindsay. She has to scramble because the center fielder, Kenzie, was there in a hurry. But she picks up the base hit. Nice job of hitting right there by Shea Lindsay. Darian Lindsay will be the batter. She singled and scored in the first, popped out to the third baseman in the second inning, and lined to short in the fifth. Runner goes, swing and a miss on the pitch. And Shea Lindsay in safe with the stolen base. Silverton fans grumbling about that a little bit. Bag became dislodged. And so David Blake, the third base umpire, will tromp it back into place. Nothing in one to Darian Lindsay. Hibbs, the shortstop, calls for the pop-up. And there are two down. Cassidy Lemberger will be the batter. An infield hit in three at-bats. Run scored. Up and inside for ball one. Just bloop back over the screen. A few feet and short of us and short of the press box. To left, tight on the line, and foul. Hibbs, the shortstop, couldn't quite get there with the run, and it was shallow for Shecker to make the run. 
Vegas question was whether it would be fair or foul, and it was about two feet wide of the line. So one and two to Lemberger with Rain Spencer waiting on deck. Spencer perhaps hoping she gets a chance to hit just to get a shot at going for the cycle. Off speed pitch missing. And it's two balls and two strikes. Called strike three. Lemberger kind of swings the bat over her head in frustration as the Bucks are retired in the top of the seventh inning. Eight strikeouts now for Katie Mannion, but of course she's given up the home runs and a lot more to Pendleton so far. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. And we'll go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Pendleton three outs away from a state championship as they lead Silverton by a score of six to nothing. Scheduled for Silverton in the bottom of the seventh inning. First baseman Shelby McIntyre. Shortstop Haley Hibbs. And then the pitcher Katie Mannion. Ralph Cortez telling his kids in the dugout, everybody up, everybody stay up, beat. Win or lose, they've had a phenomenal season, as we said, finished third in their league. Got into the playoffs and were the number 13 seed, number 13 rated team. And up until today, did not allow a run in the playoffs. Easy to see why with the pitching of Mannion. And we go to the bottom of the seventh. Shelby McIntyre will lead it off. She's popped to second and struck out in the fourth. Swing and a miss on the fastball from Kristen Crawford. Just inside for ball one. Crawford has hit a batter and then let the following hitter reach on a fielder's choice in the contest. Fastball down the heart of the plate for a called strike. It's one and two. Off-speed pitch, fouled back into the netting. And it stays one and two. Foul back to the netting. Check swing. Did she go? Is it a call? No, it is ball two. No on the swing, no on the pitch location. Easy. Pendleton fans thought they had one there, and I think Crawford did too. Two balls and two strikes. Foul tip. She stays alive. Lead off hitter here in the seventh, along at bat for McIntyre. The 2 2. Off speed, swing and a miss. Ball gets away from the catcher. And she will get aboard. <laughs> Scored as a strikeout for Crawford in the passed ball on the catcher. Allows McIntyre, the leadoff hitter in the seventh, to get on. And suddenly Silverton making some noise again. Time called, no pitch. As Haley Hibbs steps in, Hibbs grounded to short in the first, popped the second base in the fourth. Called strike at the letters.
Darianne Lindsay across the diamond to Tori Spencer for the sure out and the first out of the inning. McIntyre moves up to second. She is the first Silverton player to reach second base in the ball game. Katie Mannion, the batter, with one out. Mannion is grounded to short and popped to the first baseman. Inside for ball one. Pendleton six, Silverton nothing in the bottom of the seventh. A flare and the no hitter is gone. Two outs away from the no hitter. Mannion able to poke one over the infield for the first base hit of the ball game for Silverton. Pendleton fans applauding the effort of Kristen Crawford. And Ralph Cortez calling time now. Ever so close to coming up with the no-hitter in the state championship game. And Mannion, who's pitched well, gets the little flare for the hit. Abigail Grant will be the courtesy runner for Mannion at first base. As she finally gets something up on the hit column on the scoreboard for Silverton. Six and one-third no-hit innings for Kristen Crawford. Taylor Medley will be the batter, hit by a pitch in the second, grounded back to the pitcher in the fifth, and she gets hit again. So the bag's full. Ralph Cortez coming down to check on Medley, who took a pretty good shot on that fastball. She says she's okay. And right now, Pendleton just needs to relax and take care of business. They still have a six-run lead. Silverton is going to make the courtesy runner substitution for Medley. She said she could go, but the coach isn't buying that one necessarily. And so it'll be Madeline Grant coming in as the courtesy runner at first base. So the base is full for Silverton now. And one out in the bottom of the seventh. And Jordan Ma Martin, the batter, reached on a fielder's choice in the second. Grounded out to third base in the fifth inning. Crawford trying to get back in her zone after losing the no-hitter. Foul tip at the plate for strike one. One pitch, fouled down the first baseline, and it's nothing in two. So now you see the dilemma I was referring to earlier. If you'd have to choose a star of the game for Pendleton between Spencer with three extra base hits in the home run and had Crawford maintain that no-hitter, good luck trying to choose between them. She still turned in a great pitching performance, but she wants to close out a shutout here. Pitch downstairs, and again, some grumbling on the Pendleton side of things. One ball, two strikes. They thought they had that one. Lillianne Hall scheduled to hit next for Silverton. Up the middle, base hit, one run will score. They'll stop the next runner. And they go from no hitter to ending the shutout all here in the seventh. Martin with the chop single up the middle and an RBI to make it six to one. Pass ball kind of coming back to haunt Pendleton a little bit. It all came unglued from there. Lillianne Hall, the batter, grounded back to the pitcher in the second, grounded to short in the fifth. Outside, and it's 1-0. and oh. <laughs> Pulled 
towards right. Leonard played perfectly, makes the catch, and throws a bullet into Spencer, the catcher. Two gone now, and they pelted fans stomping in approval of their team defense. And Danny Shecker will be the batter. Shecker lined out to the first baseman in the third and grounded back to the pitcher in the sixth inning. A speed upstairs for ball one. Well, give Silverton some credit. They could have had a quiet seventh inning and just packed the bus and gone home, but instead they break up the no-hit bid and they break up the shutout here in the seventh inning. Perhaps not the experiences they wanted in their first trip to a championship game, but a good rally here showing the medal that got them to this final after finishing third in league play. Fastball called strike on the inside corner, and it's one and one, and the Pendleton fans now up on their feet and start to feel it. To short, Lamberger, the flip to third, in time for the out, and that will close out the ball game. They didn't quite get all the glory that they wanted as the no-hitter came to an end in the seventh, but after losing the title a year ago, Pendleton comes back and comes up with a state championship in 2012. For Silverton in the seventh inning, they got a run on two hits. There were no errors, and four runners were left on base. Pendleton, your 2012 Class 5A champions, 6-1 to one over Silverton. When we return, we'll have the trophy presentation and a little bit extra for three members of the Pendleton State Championship team. We'll tell you all about it when we return to Corvallis. You're watching OSAA.TV. At Les Schwab, along with great prices, our tires come with the kind of protection most other places just don't give you, which includes free flat repairs, equal value replacements, pre-trip safety checks, and more for the entire life of the tire. With the other guys, well, you just never know. So why is free protection on your tires good to have? Lifetime protection. That's our best tire value promise. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. From Silverton, Jordan Martin. And back in Corvallis, 6-1 to one the score in favor of Pendleton as they're out celebrating in the right field corner momentarily. Getting a little bit of running in, but they need to come down the first baseline now and get their medals and their trophy. Buckaroos kind of put this one out of range early as they tallied five runs in the top of the first inning. With one out, Darian Lindsay singled. Cassidy Lemberger added an infield single. Rain Spencer, a two RBI double. Evangeline Oliveira walked. And then Jory Spencer cleared the bases with a three run home run. That was all that the Buckaroos needed, but they got one more on the solo home run from Rain Spencer in the top of the sixth inning. Silverton, no hit for the first six and a third innings. But Shelby McIntyre led off the seventh, reaching base on a passed ball strikeout. Moved to second on a ground out, moved to third on a single. And finally, with the bases loaded, came in on Jordan Martin's RBI single to break up the shutout as well. Pendleton, six runs, seven hits, no errors, and three left on base. Silverton had one run, two hits, no errors, and four left on base. Kristen Crawford, the winning pitcher, to close out her high school career in her season with a 19-5 and record. And Katie Mannion, the losing pitcher, eight strikeouts in a losing performance. And a nice job in between giving up some of the long balls and, of course, settling down after that first inning of work in Silverton's first trip to the state championship game. Hitting star of the game would have to be Rain Spencer. Three for three, a double, a triple, a home run, and three RBIs to lead Pendleton to this state championship. As we said at the start of the game, Tim Carey said his team learned from last year's experience losing to West Albany. 
They shut them out in the semifinals and beat them. But the team was much looser and ready to go this year, and they certainly proved that as they came right out of the gates with five big runs in the top half of the first inning. Individual medals are being passed out to the Pendleton players, and then we'll have the trophy presentations coming up momentarily, and then a little bit extra, as we said, to share with you here following this 5A championship game. So first they'll give the consolation trophy out to Silverton as they will finish the season with a record of 22 and 9 and they really went on a great streak at the right time winning their last seven games in order to not only get into the playoffs but make it all the way to the championship game so congratulations to coach Ralph Cortez and his team for an outstanding season and meanwhile Pendleton will finish the year with a 23 and 7 record they've gone to the championship two years in a row and this time they bring home their first ever state championship here's the presentation the first place trophy will be presented to the 2012 OFAA 5A Softball State Champions, the Pendleton Lady Bikes. So Pendleton gets its first ever state championship, but there's a little bit more to the story as well coming up here just momentarily. You see, it's championship day for the Pendleton High School softball team. And that posed a problem because their scheduled start time coincided exactly with the scheduled time for this year's senior class graduation. So momentarily, after they are done posing with their pictures, three senior members of this Pendleton softball team First baseman, Jory Spencer. The left fielder, Courtney schumacher Sweek, And pitcher, Kristen Crawford, who flirted with a no-hitter in the championship game. Six and a third innings of no-hit ball before having it broken up. Well, they're going to receive their high school diplomas. Not a bad way to graduate. Oh, oh, yeah, by the way, you're also the state champions. Or the other way around, we're state champions. And, oh, by the way, we just graduated. In either case, it makes for a pretty nifty Saturday if you're a graduating senior at Pendleton High School. So we'll watch that presentation, which I believe Athletic Director Mitch Sanders is going to give the diplomas to the three players. And they lived up to what their coach said. They learned from 2011. And they came out with boys, and they came out strong in the first inning of play today with those five runs. And I believe there's the athletic director, Mitch Sanders, coming out now. And he has the all-important diplomas in hand. The coaches are saying, all right, seniors, you've got to break up the huddle for a minute before we have the celebration. Yep, there the seniors come out now. Not a bad graduation present. Championship medal around your neck. And your high school diploma in hand. I'm not sure if anybody on the rest of the team is going to be singing pomp and circumstance to them necessarily. But all in all, a pretty good way to cap things for the Pendleton Buckaroos. Tremendous pitching by Kristen Crawford. Great hitting throughout the lineup with seven hits. Three of them extra base hits from Rain Spencer. And another three-run home run from sister Jory Spencer. Jory, one of the graduates, but Rain will be back. Only three players lost off this championship team. As you can tell, this portion wasn't really scripted very well. <laughs> <laughs> rather uh, extemporaneous, and they're going to lead them all the way down to home plate now to make the presentation of the high school diplomas. Cindy Simmons from the OSAA also out there, along with Pendleton Athletic Director Mitch Sanders. 
I don't know. She lost the no hitter. Does she deserve a diploma? I'm not. I'm not so sure. Well, we'll we'll go ahead and do it anyway. So, so Kristen Crawford there getting her diploma first. Courtney Schumacher Sweet, the left fielder, and the first baseman, Jory Spencer. Well, you don't get a chance to wear the robe, you don't get a chance to wear the mortar board, and you don't get a chance to speak, but they let their actions speak for themselves on the field. Perhaps the three happiest graduates of Pendleton High School right now, they're graduates and state champions all in one. That'll wrap things up for the 2012 5A softball state championships. Our final score again, Pendleton, first-time state champions, as they defeat Silverton by a score of 6-1. to one. Thanks for joining us. So long from Corvallis. This has been the 2012 5A softball state championships on OSAA.tv.